On November 24, 1859, the naturalist Charles Darwin published his groundbreaking book On the Origin of Species. In this work, Darwin codifies his theory of evolution by natural selection, although Darwin himself referred to it as descent with modification. The core concept of this theory is that those that possess inheritable, beneficial, and adaptive traits reproduce more often than those who don't possess these traits. In today's world, we might say that those who pass down the most genes to the next generations are the most successful. But is this really measuring the success of an individual or the species as a whole? Is the proliferation of one's genome really the end-all be-all of human existence? To really dig into this question, let's look at our cousins, Homo neanderthalensis. Today we know that about 2% of all non-African DNA originates from the Neanderthals. Using a little back-of-the-envelope math, I want to look at just how much Neanderthal DNA is floating in the modern human population. And this is probably a good time to point out that despite previous assumptions, African populations also carry Neanderthal DNA. Through these simple calculations, you can see that the over 7 billion modern humans carry the equivalent of about 132 million Neanderthal genomes. Now consider that while Neanderthals were alive, most researchers agree their population never went beyond 70,000 individuals. And this 70,000 figure is the absolute maximum. Think about that. When Neanderthals were alive, their max population was 70,000 individuals. And today, they've been gone for 40,000 years, and yet the equivalent of 132 million exists indirectly through modern humans. I should point out that in reality, most of us carry the same genetic sequences from the Neanderthal genome, which means most of the Neanderthal genome is lost in time. Nonetheless, as a population, modern humans carry a massive amount of Neanderthal genetic material within their genomes. Because the global population is continually growing, does this mean that the year 2022 has been the Neanderthals' most successful year yet? Were they less successful 100,000 years ago when they were living, breathing, laughing, crying, and feasting, but with much lower genetic levels than we carry for them today? Are we humans simply gene bags carrying special cargo to pass on to the next generation? Or does the human experience matter? In my opinion, that's something we have to decide individually. But one thing I will say is, imagine if the roles were reversed and Neanderthals were the sole hominid survivors. How meaningful would it be to you that they carry a small snippet of your DNA, but your species died out 40,000 years ago?